Linda, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is my mic on? Thank you. I feel like Madonna for the first time. I've got my own <laughs> um, Wi-Fi, and that's wonderful. I will be looking at my notes because I'm not a cyborg yet. Um, I'm coming for a hearing test. I must admit I've found out lots of things about myself. Um, I'm interested in the self-portrait, and so as you can see, my topic is from self-portraits to selfies. Um, the self-portrait, um, as you can imagine, for, for younger people is a very important thing because we, once we're adolescent, the self is a very important construct. Who am I? And I think at a very young age, I became interested in the self-portrait. And as I aged, it became different things, the cyborg and so forth and so forth. Now, what I'm looking at this afternoon is what happens to the genre of the self-portrait in the age of social media and Facebook specifically. Now, the self-portrait um, as a genre, for those of you who know your art history, came to the fore um, during the Renaissance. It's a byproduct of Renaissance. And it's during this time that the artist was no longer just seen as an artisan or a technician, but the artist become known as a genius, an intellect. So the status of the artist changed during the Renaissance, and we also see during the Renaissance the um, outcome of the self-portrait. The founding moment of the self-portrait comes in the person of a German artist, Albrecht Dürer, and that very well-known self-portrait of him, and I'm going to pose, I can't sing, but I can pose, <laughs> the self-portrait of Albrecht Dürer referring to himself in 1500, which is seen as the founding moment of the self-portrait. In the self-portrait, what I think fi many people find interesting is you see an artist reflecting on themselves, how they see themselves, and that comes for in the depiction. But what many people don't know is that artists created self-portraits not only because they're narcissistic and they're interested in themselves, but because the self is the most cheap model. If you don't have anybody around and you don't have money to pay for a model, you, there you are, you can just watch, look in the mirror and make a portrait. Hence, Rembrandt von Rijn created more than 90 self-portraits, not because he was so self-obsessed, but because he was a cheap model for himself. Another very interesting thing in line that I pick up and I find very interesting in self-portraits is that technology and self-portraits go together. It is usually developments in technologies, for instance, the mirror, that makes self-portraits possible. For instance, Albrecht Dürer's self-portrait of 1500 was made possible because of developments in mirror technology. Yes, the flat mirror came to, to the fore in 1500, and hence we get the full-length um, self-portrait. Now, what we see in our day and age is because self-portraiture and technology go hand in hand, in the 20th century, and I know I'm jumping a few centuries, we see that cameras become more available to, to ordinary people. And then what happens is ordinary citizens are starting to participate in their own self-expression. Um, with the Kodak and the Polaroid, as you all know, so the self-portrait becomes almost democratic. And Graham Turner says that in our age, more than ever, he speaks about a democratic turn because more and more ordinary people ha now have the advantage of self-expression through idols, X Factor, America's Got Talent, South Africa's Got Talent. All these uh, media help people to self-express um, themselves and more and more ordinary citizens have an access to that. Which now leads me to social media um, and to the selfie. Now the selfie, is the modern contemporary version of the self-portrait. The selfie is a self-portrait photograph taken by a handheld digital camera um, or a cell phone. In other words, you can immediately see the link between technology and self-portrait. It also means that ordinary citizens, and we all do it, we all got a Facebook and we all got our um, profiles up there and our self-portraits or our selfies already uploaded. The selfie is a communicative gesture. It's what you show to the world. This is a virtual me that will be talking to you or that will stand in for me virtually. The interesting thing is also about this new selfie in technology is 
that I can constantly update and manipulate and invest in my self-portrait. I can constantly create a new one, a better one, um, and also use digital technologies to enhance. Photoshop goes a long way. Also, this brings me to the other notorious element of a selfie, which is called the so-called my angles. Um, it comes from yeah, my space angles, sorry, um, from the my space platform. What happens here is very normal. It's, it's, I think it's human behavior, the art of deception. Um, we, especially girls, and I'll be talking about that right now, um, people depict themselves in very flattering ways. And apparently, and this is very useful for all the women in the audience, if you hold the camera up this high and it looks down on you, it will take about 10 Ks, <laughs> max, definitely. Um, very flattering, flattering lighting. You can, all do, you can use all of these kind of deceptive um, techniques. But, as you do know, after a while, even if you meet someone online, you would like to meet face to face. And then what happens is, you meet someone and you realize, oh my, you don't look anything like your picture on um, Facebook or on MySpace. So that became known as the MySpace angles, notorious. And you can go and look it up. Also, what I find fascinating being interested in gender is that women, we are the ones who upload more selfies than men. It's women who participate in creating their own images, more than men. Now, we can argue, and I know that lots of feminists are writing about this already, some say that women are now taking control of their own images. We are now showing men what we want you to see of us. This is my best angle, you should look at me this way. Um, while other feminists argue, no, that women are actually now participating and they're continuating and they are perpetuating the male gaze. So once again, we have that whole gender debate already happening or perpetuating itself also with the selfie. Then, these stories of the infamous webcam girls. What happens here is that the distinction between the private and the public spheres are completely dissolved. Um, the most famous webcam girl is a college girl from the USA. Now, girls, if you want to make money, this is one way of doing it. Um, she broadcast her whole life, Jennifer Ringley, on the internet. And one could, you buy um, time, and then you could watch Jennifer do ordinary things and sometimes more not-so-ordinary things. <laughs> um, she did that for more than a year. Um, and became very famous for that, now known as the Gen um, Cam. In other words, the whole um, distinction between the private life and the public life is completely dispersed. There's no dis distinction anymore. Which now also caused um, serious to argue, but why are people exhibiting themselves? Why this exhibitionism? Um, why do they partake in the surveillance on them? Why do they show everything? And there are authors who argue that this is a form of an um, empowering exhibitionism. It's no longer being surveilled from outside, it is now to empower yourself by showing yourself. I'm not too sure about that, but that's one of the arguments. Nevertheless, where we stand today with new technologies and with a selfie, and I think millions of selfies already online, um, many, art, many theorists also refer to the selfie as the folk art of the 21st century, because we can all participate in it. And what I find fascinating, and I, I'm not going to go into any detail, I'm going to leave you there, is the following. The traditional self-portrait is a physical object with duration. It stands in time and space. It hangs in a gallery. The selfie is a continuous process spread over networks. It needs constant maintenance, Constant reassessment, constant manipulation, and it becomes, in fact, ephemeral. In other words, immaterial. And that's, for me, the difference between these two genres. And that will be me, then, on the selfie and self-portrait. Thank you. <laughs>